you know that discovery stands for disruptive and a lot of things, and I want to start with this word, disruptive. So uh, really, we will be disruptive in many, in many areas. So we are maybe aware that we can optimize with using formulas, using past data, so try to make a technological improvement. We can mix this technological improvement with some cost approach so that we can consider money somewhere. But we all know that, in fact, one of the main drivers of our society is market, is money, but okay, let's say it's, it's market. And then the disruptive approach is how can we even make one step uh, forward and not just consider just technology and cost and create this concept of, of value, which is somehow related with what the market is expecting. That, of course, has a relation with cost, but we're, going, we're trying to do something which is more, let's say, uh, challenging in this, in this case. And anyhow, it will be disrupted. Uh, one of the elements, so that is trying to introduce the business or the business modeling as one, again, of these, of these elements, and I will do this short masterclass to let you know some elements of business business model. So the idea is I will not start with the aim of the masterclass. I will start just with an example, just to make you familiar with the, with the process. Then I will explain what are we aiming at this masterclass, and I will introduce a couple of concepts of business model, one specific uh, methodology, which is the business model canvas, and then we will finish with another example. That's the idea. So let's start with our business model, something that looks familiar to all of you. Nespresso. Are we going to do really this discovery a business model of Nespresso? We are going to learn a lot of things thinking about something which is familiar to us, and then we will see how can we use these concepts into this modeling of business. What do we know about Nespresso? We know that it's a part of Nestle, which is a very big food company in Europe. We know that this Nescafe is dominating the, the market with this brand, Nescafe. Probably we don't really know, but I am giving this information that is not so so uh, hard or so, so strong in, in roast and ground coffee. And then Nespresso was designed to, to bridge or to fill the, the, the gap through a dedicated espresso machine and a pot system. This is something which is new. In fact, it's also a disruptive approach, approach to, the, to the market. And the idea behind trying to produce quality or restaurant high quality uh, products or coffee uh, at home, which is again something which is different. And then it's trying to move from this more commercial coffee, you may think about the Melita machines that are everywhere, but probably the quality of the coffee is not the, the same. So try to, to do this. And, we can look at that one specific uh, market uh, sector segment, which is the high incomes household. So that's the information we know about Nespresso. What else we know? Uh, in fact, we know that Nespresso is selling the, 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 the capsules directly by internet, high retail stores, some dedicated locations, their, their own boutiques, instead of gross market retailers. This is again another change. We will see how this affects the, the model. Also, Nespresso envisions like the future needs of these customers, and so that has created this Nespresso club card, uh, gathering the information of the of the customers. There has been some joint ventures with coffee machines manufacturers, so it's not the, the product or initial product of, of Nescafe producing uh, coffee machines, and then the revenues are coming from okay, the, the, the sales of uh, the capsules and also the, the machines. So that's the elements we know. We just leave this information here, and then we will be recovering this information while producing the, the model. So we can really start now and say, well, what's the aim of this masterclass? Very easy. The idea is to provide you with general overview on business model canvas. So it's one of the methodologies, the importance for, for companies, and of course, it's not the aim of the, of the masterclass to make you experts on business modeling, but at least able to understand what's behind and, and probably the idea is that you will help us very much during the brainstorming session and see how can we connect the business model with the, with the system models. 
and I still have to prepare disclaimer about business models. Uh, and I'm using a, well, a quite uh, European Commission relevant information, the, the TRL, and we will see something that, okay, we are future emerging technologies in this program, so we are thinking, so we are working with technology that is not really in the market, is not real. So there are not hundreds of companies selling these products. We can say that probably most of the, of the work packages one, two, two, four are dealing with materials that are in the TRL three, four, five, we can, we can discuss. And we will see one of the things that we will discover is that the, the business modeling is working well, and then we will see what means work, working well uh, when we are at, let's say, closer to the market, TRL, so TRL A to, to I. In fact, we will see, well, you all know that physics does not change. So the formulas that you can see, we can see the same formulas in 100 years, and we will see that everything is the same. We can, well, on the other side, we can think on companies, success companies today, that maybe tomorrow, just without changing the product, without changing anything, they can become a failure. So we are dealing with something which is not so mathematically related. It may depend on the competitor's attitude. So I can be the, the, the first in the market, and tomorrow there is another one who is the first. So everything is changing in my business. So this is one of the elements, and that's the reason I said it works moderately well when dealing with TRL 8 to 9. It means that there are hundreds of companies that are having data, and we can process this data using machine learning or other less, less sophisticated uh, tools, uh, and then we can try to make a, a model of this. Uh, we will see how can we do this without having all this information and try to fit the, the system model and try to get this, this value approach for designing the DLO missions. So that's a describe, the disclaimer. And then, again, also as, a, as an introduct, some introductory words, uh, physical modeling uh, versus business model. We, we all know that in the past, from the physical part, the way of doing a, a physical test is producing a prototype and measuring things about this prototype, for instance, well, a shop with a, with a wall. After having hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of data, we are able to simulate this. So it's no longer necessary to use cost and time consuming processes, prototypes, to get the data. We can simulate a lot before doing the first prototype so that we can be more sure on the results we can achieve. Business modeling is, is the same. So we can try a business. If we have money, we can invest. We can buy some buildings and some machinery, produce a product, and during this trial and error, try to increase revenues as much as possible. And well, in fact, one every seven businesses uh, becomes a success six of them become a failure. So it's a lot of, of many cost and time consuming doing businesses like this. The idea is that can we have a tool to simulate the business before investing in the business, before losing time and money so that when we start the process, we can reduce this one to seven success ratio to one to three, which is quite more convenient than, than the other. And that's the idea, and this is specifically the, the business model canvas. So to try to make this, this parallelism between a physical model and a business model. What the idea behind is reducing time and cost in taking decisions, but as, as you will see, it is not done through type of modelization, CFD, or so it's another type of modelization. What's a business model? Some definitions. For instance, a business model describes how the organization operates from Magreta 2002. Another definition, a business model describes the rationale on how organization creates, delivers, and captures value in economic, social, cultural, or other contexts from Oster Walder in 2010. Let's see briefly that business model is used to describe what companies do in order to get profit. And then we will somehow relate this profit to the value concept that was introduced in the, in the system modeling. 
and more specifically, what's our business model canvas? A business model canvas is a way to show how organizations create and deliver value for, from and for the stakeholders of the company. This was the, the first definition that was used by Oster Walden in 2004. If I'm not wrong, that's the PhD, so by the time of the PhD of Professor uh, Oster Walden right now. So, how create and deliver value to the stakeholders of the, of the company? Now we have a 3 minutes 40 seconds uh, video that gives a first approach, quickly approach, that I will explain more in, in detail and also <laughs> provide you with an example. This is the business model canvas. It's just what Beck and Carl need to craft a powerful business model. And it can do the same for you. Let's dive in and see how it works. There are nine essential building blocks that make up any business model. When you get all nine blocks working together, you'll have answered the fundamental questions any business model must solve. We'll start here with customer segments. These are all the people or organizations for which you're creating value. For each segment, you have a specific value proposition. These are the bundles of products and services that create value to your customers. The channels describe through which touch points are interacting with customers and delivering value. The customer relationships outline the types of relationships you're establishing with your customers and how you're acquiring and retaining them. The pricing mechanisms through which your business model captures value are documented under revenue streams. The key resources show which assets are indispensable to your business model, so you can describe the infrastructure you need to create, deliver, and capture value. The key activities show which things you need to be able to perform well. The key partners show who can help you leverage your business model. Since you won't own all key resources yourself, nor will you perform all key activities. And once you understand your business model's infrastructure, you'll also have an idea of its cost structure. Any business model can be that this way. Nine building blocks working to reinforce and strengthen each other. But before you make a model for yourself, it helps to see what a breakthrough business model looks like in action. Like this one. Low-cost airlines revolutionized air travel thanks to their disruptive business model. Let's first look at their value proposition. A low-cost airline offers ultra-cheap flights to their main customer segment, budget travelers, by adopting a no-fault policy. And this leads to additional revenue streams, because customers pay for their ticket and additional fees on items like food and drink, priority boarding, and luggage. The airlines save even more money through their choice of channels, selling only through call centers and the internet making for efficient, if not always convenient, customer relationships that are automated and often impersonal. Okay, that covers the right side of the canvas, the part everyone can see. The left side of the canvas is what's going on backstage. Like their choice of key resources, they reduce maintenance and training costs by using a single aircraft model for the whole fleet. And they only fly to cheap airports where it's cost efficient to land, or they even get paid to touch down. Planes that do land have quick turnarounds so they get back in the air earning money as quickly as possible. And they form key partnerships with others in the travel industry, like car rental, hotel, and insurance companies. Finally, under cost structures, all maintenance, training, airport, and call center costs are trimmed to their lowest levels. All of these pieces working together make their fares almost impossible for traditional airlines to compete with. There's nothing superior about these airlines except their business model. They're reaching an entirely new segment of travelers out of reach for traditional airlines. Hmm. Cutting out costs is pretty exciting, right? But wait, just because it's successful for discount airlines doesn't mean all work for your idea. Luckily, the business model canvas allows you to iterate many models and test them quickly. Let's get started with your own business idea. Okay. So we have seen how it looks, a uh, business model. So let's try to find these nine elements, they call the nine building blocks, and we can, as it is also explained, we can iterate and produce and try to improve the business model before going to the, to the market so that we can be sure that it may it may it may work. So for the for the definition is that it can be described through these nine building blocks and that we show how the, the company tries to win customers and make profit, which is the, the final element. So, and you can test as much business model as you want before investing in the product or service or company or whatever. Which are these nine building blocks? We have seen there are two parts. 
we will, we will call the value side and the cost side. In the value side, we have what is more visible, so the customers, the relationships, the channels, and especially the value proposition, so that they bring the revenues of the company. And then the part which is not so easy to understand, who are the key partners for that business, which are the key activities or the key resources, and then what's behind, so the cost structure to, to get this, this value proposition alive. Let's start with the customer segment. Customer segment, it's a different groups of people, organizations, businesses that aim to reach, or that we are aiming to reach or serve, since they have common needs, problems, or behaviors. That's the customer segment. And then coming back again to Nespresso, which is the, the customer segment of Nespresso. So I am asking the question to you. And I give you some idea, because there is a picture here to help. So remember what we said about Nespresso in the customer segment? Sorry? Yeah, high income. Yeah, high income. Yes, and probably when I'm doing these questions, Sylvia and, and Santiago will not be allowed to answer. <laughs> <laughs> so we just to create this. So we have identified a customer segment with similar um, needs or wants. They want quality coffee at home. We have identified the customer segment. And well, just to remember, this is put in the, in the right hand part of the, of the model and it says, What are your customers like? <coughs> value proposition. Value proposition is probably the main issue. What are we providing to them, which is key? It's the reason why customers will choose your product in front of the competitors. That's the definition of the value proposition. Some characteristics necessary for the value proposition should be unique and different from competitors. So what makes you unique and different? It's important to think about this. And of course, it <coughs> shall activate the willingness of the customers to pay for this. Because if they're not willing to pay, this is not a good value proposition. You should, you should improve. Some other characteristics. Oh, sorry. This is... So for the, for the Nespresso, again, which is the value proposition of Nespresso? Yes. There is also a picture happening a little bit. Yes. So this is so this is special. Yes. I saw some time ago, if you calculate how much coffee is here inside and you calculate the price of this amount of coffee compared with the normal coffee, it may be 100 times more expensive. So why are they willing to pay for something which is in fact 100 more times expensive? Because there is something around that will help. But so cost is not the most important. You, you can take profit if you are able to, to produce a, a good value proposition. So the value proposition of Nespresso is uh, this one, disruptive in this case, so similar to this cover. And the value proposition is just in the middle of the, of the model. Then we see that there are a couple of relationships between the value proposition and the customer segment. One of them is the channels, the channels that are being used to bring the value proposition to the customer segment. So channel is a mechanism that companies use to communicate and make available the value proposition to the customer. Uh, just not to go too much in detail about theory, but we can see that there are two types of channels. A direct channel, so producer or final user make an agreement so that they receive the product or using indirect channels through intermediaries that can be agents, wholesalers, purchasing, licensing, so lots of possibilities of having this, this channel. And of course, can you imagine that right now it will come my question, which is the channel that is being used by Nespresso for combining the value proposition with the customers? Okay, so through internet, through, through the dedicated stores. So, okay, this is the channel. We can modelize, which are of everything related on Nespresso. What is more important for the channels is this internet and these uh, specialized boutiques. And this is the part of, that combines value proposition and customer segment. But also important which type of customer relationship is being established in order to get not only the, the willingness to pay, but the willingness to continue. So it's not only to capture the, the customer, but to, to keep with you as much time as, as possible. So customer relationship, type 
of relationship to make, so required to make business where engaging and retaining customers in order to increase. You will see that some, many, and it's increasing the number of business models that, in fact, the main value or the main relationship is to create or to have a customer all over the life, not just one one shot uh, uh, sorry one shot selling but more times selling all over the, the, the time and for Nespresso what, what is the the relationship or this customer relationship that is has been created through this new product the Nespresso club cup so it's a way so you are a member of a selective club and you are providing a lot of information to Espresso that can be used again using maybe uh, some type of data mining and try to identify other needs that they may have. They are also doing in the low cost companies when they are providing your information. They are calculating which type of products really you need, which type of travels are you being expected to be offered. So you are giving a lot of information to them so that they can create or can understand which are your needs. So that's the customer relationship between Nespresso and its customers. The, the Nespresso, Nespresso cup. And it's in this, again, in this right hand part of the of the, of the model. Then putting everything together, we may get an estimation on which will be the revenue stream for, for them. The revenue stream is the value of the price that the customer is willing to, to pay or to buy for the product or for service. You can see that there are different ways of, of pricing. So we can talk about these transactional revenues, so one-time customer payment, probably it's more from Ford. You buy a car, you pay for the car, and maybe next car will not be Ford. Probably Ford would like you to buy more cars, but this is this transactional revenues. But these recurring revenues that are increasing. So it's a continuous payment because it's a the value proposition. Is, is based, for instance, in a post-purchasing service or just you are just licensing the use of one tool that is going to be improved during the time so that you are recurrently paying for this product. It's another way of, of getting the, the revenue. And this is something that also can be considered into the, into the model. Uh, again, also for pricing mechanism. We can say about fixed price, so cost <coughs> is related to the cost of producing the, the, the price, but there is also a dynamic price, something that you can negotiate, eBay or something similar. It's another way of getting a price that is maybe not directly related to the cost. This is something that should also could also be considered when thinking about new business models. So, what are the revenue streams of Nespresso? What do you think? In fact, there is also the answer is written. So, recurring revenue. So, probably it may happen that in the future you may also receive the, the machine for free because they will pay the machine during the consumption of the Nespresso pots in, in the future. Why not? And there are some cases, like you, you know, some printing uh, equipment, the cost is nothing compared with the cost of the toner or things like this. So, the, the product is the toner and the, the, the printing machine is just the tool for you to pay for the toner. So this is a recurring uh, revenues that are good ideas for having this customer not just just once, but for the end to the, to the end of the of the existence of the person, to the client of your company. So and that's the value part of the of the business model. Having all this modelized you can reach this value approach uh, for the for the revenue stream. But you cannot just make a model on this part. It's important to know what you need in order to get us, how you will create and offer this value proposition, how much does it cost, how you will you reach the market. You know that you can define your channels, but how you are going to, to reach and how will you keep this, uh, uh, to these customer relationships and again, how will you earn <coughs> these revenues? Uh, well, of course, it's important. <coughs> That's a clear message, not only the right hand part, but also the left hand part. It's important to, to modernize. And let's start with the key resources. So, the, these essential assets you need to create and deliver the value proposition. So, uh, again, there are some types of, of uh, 
categorization of these uh, key resources, tangible, intangible, human resources, and in, inside the tangible resources, financial or physical, intangible, technology, reputation. So these are things that may you help in creating the value proposition. And it's important for you to identify which are these key resources necessary for producing the, the value proposition. And what do you think about Nespresso? Which are the key resources they have? Clearly, they have a brand. They are using the, the brand to, to get access to, to the market. They have their own facilities to produce the, the, the coffee. And also, they have money so, for, doing, for doing this. So that's the key resources for, for Nespresso. And we put place this, this information on key resources in this part of the, of the model. Then we have the key activities. The key activities are is the capacity of the organization to create. It's not just the assets. The, the assets it's, it's one part, but how you will be able to efficiently and effectively transforming the inputs into outputs that will become products or, or services. Uh, so here we need further explanation how can we find or easily identify the key activities of our business? The tool that we suggest to use is the value, the value chain. The value chain is trying to find from these primary activities, buying the, the raw materials, transform the raw materials, from buying the materials, processing the materials, sending or delivering the, the materials, plus the marketing activities and the post service, this will create some margin that will be useful and then the secondary or, or supporting activities, the infrastructure, the human resources management, technology and procurement that are also providing some margin. So once you have identified this, this will be part of these key uh, activities of your, of your uh, business model canvas. For instance, uh, in a health observation mission or value chain, you can see that in the upstream we have from the initial investment, satellite manufacturing, the ground, the ground equipment and the launcher service. This may be part of the, uh, of, the, of the value chain and we can identify each of these elements and try to find how much is this in terms of cost, how much for a specific mission. Then in the midstream we we'll have the satellite operator and the the data management of the imagery, if we are considering earth observation, and then in the downstream, the service provider of this, let's say, manipulated data that can be of useful for, for, the, for the customers. So this is a possible value chain in this. And why is this important? Because the value chain may help us to understand how the value is created, so how can you find each contribution to the margin of the, of the company. It also can be used to, exam, to examine the, the activities of the, of the firm and see how they are interconnected. And then at the end, you identify how this competitive advantage you have against competitors, how is being built. And for the Nespresso, which are the key activities you consider? Okay. Everything from the production to the uh, packaging and the delivery, bringing so lots of key activities that are mainly related to this marketing activities, the main uh, element or differentiating <coughs> elements for Nespresso in this, in this case. And okay, the key activities are located in this part of the, of the business model. Then the key partners. Again, very, very important. The key partners are those necessary stakeholders that help you to optimize your business model, so reducing risk and getting access to the key resources. So they are really necessary to, well, to make sense to the value proposition that you are, you are offering. These type of partnerships, they may come from strategic alliances, this co competition so it's a collaborating competition. So with your competitors, you may grow awareness of the, or your power into the market, so you can be competitive, but at the same time you can collaborate. It's a type of partnership, joint ventures, buyer-supplier relationships, some examples on the right-hand part of, of each of these, of these types. 
it's necessary to identify which are the key partnerships that will allow you to produce your value proposition in this case. Clearly for the Nespresso case, so the key partners are related to the to the manufacturers of the of the machine. So it's something that Nescafe alone is not able to, to do. So they need if they get this a key partnership, they can they produce the value proposition that they are thinking about. And it's in the left hand part of the diagram. And then once you know which are your key activities, key resources, key partners, and also the value proposition, then you can try and identify we are uh, which are the special <coughs> cost for this value proposition to reach the, the, the market. That's the, the, the cost structure. Describes, describes all the cost to operate the, the business model and it can be estimated in this case when you know this, this information. And just to, to see a little more the magnitude of the problem of introducing the business model into the system modeling is that probably this is the, the hidden part but it's hidden for everyone so it's not easy for you to knock at the door and say oh Mr. Planets can you provide me all your data about your contracts, about your key partnerships, and, and which is your cost structure? It's quite difficult. So we will use this estimation tool. But estimation, as you know, it's a way of saying we are inventing some figures that seem that may match. But this is the exercise you have to do because this is not easily available. Sometimes planets are, are giving information, but every time that you receive this type of information, you can say, well, this is the real information or this is the information they want to provide so that we may believe that this is the real information. It's not so easy. Well, I'm trying to explain that it's not so easy to produce a business model. Uh, in this case, again, for the cost structure, as we have seen that the many activities were related to the marketing, probably most of the costs in Nespresso are related to this marketing strategy. And then, so in the cost uh, side, the cost structure is what these elements are you cost. And this is the, the global picture of a, of a business model with these nine, nine building blocks. We all know, so we could start to be familiar with these, with these words. This is another example that was produced from one student when analyzing the case of planets because they deliver a lot of information, so try to find which are the value proposition of, of planets or the key relation. Ah, sorry, that, that's the, the summary of the, of the Nespresso. Sorry, I'm going too fast because for the planets we have another one. So try to find the, the, the value proposition, the customer relationship. So this can be done, but as you can imagine, this is a, a big exercise, it's a big effort. It's not something that just click a button and you, you have all this information because there are no real formulas relating all, all, these, all these elements and probably and we will see also with, with Nick that some of the input, some of these nodes will not come automatically and so the process of optimizing will be not so easy because every time you have to fit that node, you have to analyze and, and it will take longer than one click for doing, for doing this. But of course in the future when we may have more data about this, we can use tools. Well, so when we have big data, then in, in space we can also have uh, machine learning tools that can help try to find these relationships in a more convenient and efficient way. Right now, it's an exercise of committee of experts working and trying to find which are the elements so that are producing the revenues and the costs so that we can have the idea of this value. But it's a complex, a complex task. Uh, there is also a problem because it may work today, but uh, it may become obsolete just tomorrow. So you may have exactly the same information today, and you may say this is success, successful project. The same information a couple of days later, and this brings you a different information. So it's not so easy. It's one of the problems of working with people is that they are not so direct or so uh, the relationship or the, or the response factor is not always the same so it depends on the, on the mood or things like this and you may have the, the same word 
and receive a different answer. And that's a problem when, when modeling uh, a business. Uh, well, so let's finish with this expression. There is not a single business model. There are really a lot of options, and we just to have to discover all of them. So a big, a big issue. And um, okay, that was my summary of the of the business class, and I hope you may enjoy this. And of course, any question will be welcome.